Hi there. You've hit the button for edition number 352. And I'm so thankful that you're back. It's a great privilege for me to read such wonderful scriptures to you. May the Lord bless you real good as we read Habakkuk 3, Isaiah 55, and Revelation 9. So let's turn to Habakkuk 3. We heard Habakkuk bring his complaints to God about God's justice yesterday, and God answered in effect that after he uses the Babylonians, their time of judgment will come. In chapter 2, verse 3, God gives this assurance. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently, for it will surely take place it will not be delayed. Then the next verse ends with a famous promise. Look at the proud. They trust in themselves, and their lives are crooked. But the righteous will live by their faithfulness to God. The verse, as it is often quoted in the New Testament, is a little different since it was quoted from the Septuagint the ancient Greek translation of the Old Testament. Two more powerful and often quoted verses bear repeating. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. And, For as the waters fill the sea, the earth will be filled with an awareness of the glory of the Lord. Habakkuk chapter 3 Heading A Prayer of Habakkuk This is a prayer of the prophet Habakkuk. O Lord, I have heard of what you have done, and I am filled with awe. Now do again in our times the great deeds you used to do. Be merciful even when you are angry. God is coming again from Edom. The holy God is coming from the hills of Paran. His splendor covers the heavens, and the earth is full of his praise. He comes with the brightness of lightning. Light flashes from his hand, there where his power is hidden. He sends disease before him, and commands death to follow him. When he stops, the earth shakes. At his glance, the nations tremble. The eternal mountains are shattered. The everlasting hills sink down. The hills where he walked in ancient times. I saw the people of Kushan afraid, and the people of Midian tremble. Was it the rivers that made you angry, Lord? Was it the sea that made you furious? You rode upon the clouds, the storm cloud was your chariot, and you brought victory to your people. You got ready to use your bow, ready to shoot your arrows. Your lightning split open the earth. When the mountains saw you, they trembled. Water poured down from the skies. The waters under the earth roared, and their waves rose high. At the flash of your speeding arrows and the gleam of your shining spear, the sun and the moon stood still. You marched across the earth in anger, in fury you trampled the nations. You went out to save your people, to save your chosen king. You struck down the leader of the wicked and completely destroyed his followers. Your arrows pierced the commander of his army when it came like a storm to scatter us, gloating like those who secretly oppress the poor. You trampled the sea with your horses and the mighty waters foamed. I hear all this and I tremble. My lips quiver with fear. My body goes limp, and my feet stumble beneath me. I will quietly wait for the time to come, when God will punish those who attack us. Even though the fig trees have no fruit, and no grapes grow on the vines, 
Even though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no grain, even though the sheep all die and the cattle stalls are empty, I will still be joyful and glad, because the Lord God is my Savior. The Sovereign Lord gives me strength. He makes me sure-footed as a deer and keeps me safe on the mountains. And now let's reread Isaiah 55. Note that in Revelation we have already read and will read again words like the beginning of Isaiah 55. Is anyone thirsty? Come and drink, even if you have no money. Remember also that Jesus in John chapters 4 and 7 offered living water and streams of water that would bubble from within. This chapter 55 is so rich, but we don't have time for me to comment verse by verse. As a Bible translator, the promise we base our very lives upon is found in verse 11. Isaiah 55 Heading God's Offer of Mercy The Lord says, Come, everyone who is thirsty, here is water. Come, you that have no money, buy grain and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, it will cost you nothing. Why spend money on what does not satisfy? Why spend your wages and still be hungry? Listen to me and do what I say, and you will enjoy the best food of all. Listen now, my people, and come to me. Come to me, and you will have life. I will make a lasting covenant with you and give you the blessings I promised to David. I made him a leader and commander of nations, and through him I showed them my power. Now you will summon foreign nations. At one time they did not know you, but now they will come running to join you. I, the Lord your God, the holy God of Israel, will make all this happen. I will give you honor and glory. Isaiah speaks. Turn to the Lord and pray to him now that he is near. Let the wicked leave their way of life and change their way of thinking. Let them turn to the Lord our God. He is merciful and quick to forgive. The Lord says, My thoughts are not like yours, and my ways are different from yours. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways and thoughts above yours. My word is like the snow and the rain that comes down from the sky to water the earth. They make the crops grow and provide seed for planting and food to eat. So will be the word that I speak. It will not fail to do what I plan for it. It will do everything I send it to do. You will leave Babylon with joy. You will be led out of the city in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into singing, and the trees will shout for joy. Cypress trees will grow where now there are briars. Myrtle trees will come up in place of thorns. This will be a sign that will last forever, a reminder of what I, the Lord, have done. Let's turn now to Revelation chapter 9. In Revelation 8, we saw the results of the first four trumpet blasts. This, like the seals, is another vision of God's justice finally being expressed in judgment. Note that the enactment of this punishment was preceded by the prayers of God's holy people. That's how the NLT translates saints, and that word means us. We have been purified by Christ. At last, the answers to prayers for God's justice 
like heard from the martyrs in Revelation 6 and like in Habakkuk's prayer, will start to be answered. Revelation 9 Then the fifth angel blew his trumpet. I saw a star which had fallen down to earth, and it was given the key to the abyss. The star opened the abyss, and smoke poured out of it, like the smoke from a large furnace. The sunlight and the air were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. Locusts came down out of the smoke upon the earth, and they were given the same kind of power that scorpions have. They were told not to harm the grass or the trees or any other plant. They could harm only the people who did not have the mark of God's seal on their foreheads. The locusts were not allowed to kill these people, but only to torture them for five months. The pain caused by the torture is like the pain caused by a scorpion's sting. During those five months they will seek death, but will not find it. They will want to die, but death will flee from them. The locusts looked like horses ready for battle. On their heads they had what seemed to be crowns of gold, and their faces were like human faces. Their hair was like women's hair, their teeth were like lion's teeth. Their chests were covered with what looked like iron breastplates, and the sound made by their wings was like the noise of many horse-drawn chariots rushing into battle. They have tails and stings like those of a scorpion, and it is with their tails that they have the power to hurt people for five months. They have a king ruling over them who is the angel in charge of the abyss. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon. In Greek, the name is Apollyon, meaning the destroyer. The first horror is over. After this, there are still two more horrors to come. Then the sixth angel blew his trumpet. I heard a voice coming from the four corners of the gold altar standing before God. The voice said to the sixth angel, Release the four angels who are bound at the great Euphrates River. The four angels were released. For this very hour of this very day of this very month and year, they had been kept ready to kill a third of all the human race. I was told the number of the mounted troops. It was two hundred million. And in my vision I saw the horses and their riders. They had breastplates red as fire, blue as sapphire, and yellow as sulfur. The horses' heads were like lions' heads, and from their mouths came out fire, smoke, and sulfur. A third of the human race was killed by those three plagues, the fire, the smoke, and the sulfur coming out of the horses' mouths. For the power of the horses is in their mouths, and also in their tails. Their tails are like snakes with heads, and they use them to hurt people. The rest of the human race, all those who had not been killed by these plagues, did not turn away from what they themselves had made. They did not stop worshipping demons or the idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, which cannot see, hear, or walk. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic, their sexual immorality, or their stealing. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, it is a sign of your love that you have warned the human race again and again about your coming judgment. Your judgment cannot be held back forever, because then you would not be just. It is because you are just and righteous that judgment must come. We pity those who close their ears and eyes to the truth and continue in their wickedness. But they will have no excuse 
and it's right that they get what they deserve. Once again, Lord, you prove that your thoughts and ways are high above our thoughts and ways. Let those who are now in the destroyer's power hear your offer. Turn to the Lord and pray to him now that he is near. Let the wicked leave their way of life and change their way of thinking. Let them turn to you, Lord, because you are merciful and quick to forgive. At this time, before it's too late. But as for us, Lord, we wait patiently for you. May we have the same heart as Habakkuk and say, Even though the fig trees have no fruit, and no grapes grow on the vines, even though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no grain, even though the sheep all die and the cattle stalls are empty, I will still be joyful and glad, because the Lord God is my Savior. You, O Sovereign Lord, give me strength. You make me sure-footed as a deer, and keep me safe on the mountains.